Okay, so I think we'll I think we'll kick off. Welcome everybody to the next session in Crossref's annual meeting. Um, this session is a uh, community discussion around what we still need to build a robust research nexus. Uh, those of you who've been in our earlier sessions today will already have seen this slide deck, but just wanted to remind everybody that we're hoping to have a really positive, constructive conversation today. So would ask everyone to just quickly review the code of conduct. Um, and also if anybody's active on Mastodon or X, you can join the conversation there using the hashtag Crossref2023. Um, we're hoping to get everybody involved in this session. So everyone is welcome to use the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen if you have questions, comments, or input, but you can also uh, raise your hand and then we'll be able to unmute you so you can ask your question live. And finally, the slides and recordings um, from this session are going to be shared afterwards. So um, just to kick us off, um, a few definitions really. So um, this session is all about building a robust research nexus. So let, let's start with, with what we mean by that. So Crossref's vision describes this fairly well, I think. So like others, we envision a rich and reusable open network of relationships, connecting research organizations, people, things, and actions, a scholarly record that the global community can build on forever for the benefit of society. Um, and that thing is what we refer to as the research nexus. But obviously, this isn't something that we're doing alone. This is something that the whole community is working towards. And uh, the research, what we call the research nexus is referred to as other things in other parts of the community, um, the knowledge graph or the PID graph. And we're continuously building infrastructure to help make this research nexus a reality and those in the community are continuously um, adding their own data to this network. Um, thousands of people in the community every day, a lot of folks who are probably on this call as well. But we know that there's still a lot of work to do to build an even more robust and inclusive research nexus. Um, and so today's discussion is just to help surface some of the challenges um, and work out how we can all work more effectively together towards this. So we've collected a really great group of panelists today who are representing different perspectives from the community, but obviously they're not comprehensive. So we're really hoping those of you on the call can join the discussion as well. So do feel free to add comments and questions in the Q&A or do raise your hand. I think you can find that in the bottom right of, of Zoom. Raise your hand so we can unmute you and you can ask a question live or even talk about uh, a project that you're involved with live. But first off, let's uh, introduce our panel. Um, so on the panel today, we have Matt Byes, Data Sites Executive Director, who is representing the views of another infrastructure provider. Matt, would you mind giving us a little wave? <laughs> <laughs> That's Matt. Uh, we've also have uh, Randang, Editorial Director for Atlantis Press, giving us a viewpoint of a publisher. Ran, if you could give us a little wave as well. Um, we have Patricia Feeney, Crossref's Head of Metadata, and Ginny Hendricks, our Director of Member and Community Outreach. Uh, they're bringing the uh, Crossref uh, perspective. There we go. Hi, guys. Uh, we have Mercury Chitinto, Bioethicist at St. Paul's University. Uh, representing uh, journal editors and researchers. Mercury, if you could give us a wave, I can't see all the people now. Um, unfortunately, we were hoping to have Kevin from PKP, um, but unfortunately he's unwell today. So we do we do hope he's feeling better soon. Um, but we do have last but not least, Luda Waltman, who is a professor of uh, quantitative science studies and deputy director of CWTS at Leiden University bringing that bibliometrician um, viewpoint to bear. So just to get us started, um, I'm going to start with uh, a question for the panel. So um, folks, in one breath, could you share the value of metadata to you and your community? Um, let's start with Matt. 
So keeping it very brief, which is not my style, but um, I, I guess it's just, it's paramount to making it a reality. Um, without the metadata, we, we can't make this a reality. Snappy answer. Very good. Uh, Ran. Hi all. Uh, as, as the uh, publisher, metadata looks to me the, the best basis to uh, maximize the data's value from a scientist uh, scholarly output. I may refer to Miguel, uh, as we know, a, well, a wildlife eco ecologist at the University of Florida who says data without metadata is like a Lego set without instructions. Thanks. Nice analogy. Thanks, Ram. Um, Patricia. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd say the value of metadata is that it's it's vital. Um, structured metadata makes the items everyone registers with us discoverable and inter interconnected in a way that unstructured metadata can't currently. So. Very good. Ginny? I like the analogy that metadata is communication. It's how uh, we're telling the story of research and it's how we're sharing stories about research. Um, and we call ourselves scholarly communications. So metadata is totally underpinning uh, that effort. Very nice. Uh, Mercury. Oh, Mercury, I think you're still on mute. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Oh, there we go. How we can look at metadata is as a compass, which guides discovery, also connections, amplifying the work that we do in research, the impact, streamlining access, and also fostering collaboration within the community. Great stuff. Uh, Ludo. Um, yeah. I think what is really crucial at this point in the research system is to change the way assessment is done, evaluation is done, the incentive system. It's crucial to build a better research system. Assessment needs to be informed by, by, by data, partly, uh, to have evidence. And the data needs to be um, open, needs to be kind of comprehensive, needs to be transparent. That's why we need this, 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 this metadata, and in particular metadata that is indeed fully, fully open. Great stuff, thank you. Some nice analogies in there. We've got a compass, we've got a Lego set with some <laughs> good analogies going on. Um, so that's that's obviously metadata, um, but the real value, I guess, comes in in when we can see and follow the relationships between the metadata elements. So it'd be interesting to hear from the panel kind of what relationships underpinning scholarly works you think are most meaningful in your community. Um, Ludo, can we start with you? I, I, I know I think we've talked about this before and you said that actually that's a fairly impossible co question from your point of view. Indeed. Um, so 10 years ago, it would have been easy. So then the answer would have been citation links between publications. That's what we need because we do citation counting to find out who is kind of most successful in, in science. We have realized and we have learned over the past decade that's actually quite problematic. So that means that we actually need all the metadata, all the different types of relations, and having just one particular type of metadata is is not at all going to help us. Nice. Yeah, good point. Uh, Mercury, what about your community? What relationships are key there? I find uh, the relationships which are meaningful to be those connecting the works to authors and institutions, including citations. This is because they enhance transparency and also foster additionally collaboration of the work and uh, you know of the scholarly community in general. Great stuff, great stuff. Uh, Jenny? Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> We call it a nexus because it's all important. It's all it's all interlinked. It's hard to pick uh, one or two, um, but I could say you know top of certainly for the community I guess I represent, which is the Crossref members. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, tracking uh, versions is becoming much more important. So relationships between different stages of of research. 
Um, and then from my personal point of view, I'm working really closely with funders at the moment. So connecting uh, support uh, for research with the uh, the actions and the outputs uh, around um, funded projects are really, are really key for me. Top of mind at the moment, but I would agree with Ludo that, you know, that's one of the reasons we call it a nexus. It's because you're supposed to have lots of different uh relationships you know in and amongst lots of different types of objects and uh yeah that's the real value for me great so thanks Ginny Patricia what's your take well I mean like everyone else I guess the answer is all, all of the relationships but <laughs> I'm actually I'm kind of torn between things that relate a, a particular work or like the life cycle of a work to itself, like versions and translations, because I think we really want to focus with our particular membership on getting those registered so that you can see how the research has evolved over time and like be very clear exactly what you're looking at and what version it is. But then also I think the relationships that help the put the research in context, like uh, reviews and preprints and data are also equally important. Um, so that's my not an answer. <laughs> All right. Great stuff. Thanks, Patricia. Ran, what would you say? Uh, well, uh, from me, I, I kind of feel that a uh, mutual agreement from all these scholars to share, to agree, to share the data when they realize that uh, they will benefit uh, mutually from this data to Build uh, to to benefit uh, from that, and uh, uh, with a basis could, uh, uh, could better research and uh, in the future to build a sustainable academic uh, ecosystem. Uh, because from the very beginning, it might be just a monetary from policymakers to to share the, these data, make it open, but uh, through uh, making it uh, normative then using some experience and with support with infrastructures when we make it easy we, we could uh, achieve that eventually so mm -hmm. uh, so the, the first thing is bring their awareness that uh, to let them realize that that's indeed they will benefit from them and maybe citations and just uh, one of the uh, lowest benefits among all of the benefits mm -hmm. yeah Great, so yeah. Matt. Yeah, so I guess um, at DataSide, our, our community is focused on our, our vision being connecting research, advancing knowledge. And this is across people, places, and things. And so we often jump to the things, I think the, the outputs. Um, but, you know, we, we support things, you know, across from DMPs and samples to instruments to data sets. And, it's about connecting these together, but not forgetting the the people and the places, and so the organisation. So identifying things like host institution of, of a particular resource or a funding institution. Um, when we talk about people, it's also about what are those contributor roles, and then giving the community the ability to easily take a snapshot or take a view into the nexus or the graph in our context into the PID graph, the GraphQL API and look at a certain point and say, describe, tell me about the relationships here and tell me about the different connections that exist. And that serves to address those downstream use cases of really trying to understand what is the impact or what is the influence that this has um, in furthering the particular domain or research that is happening. And so I think, you know, those are the things that we need to, to jump to. I'm cautious to use the word impact because I think we jump to impact factor. And as Ludo mm -hmm. said, we want to avoid citations. But how do we understand, as an example, um, data that was collected around malaria uh, by a researcher in Africa that led to a paper that was then cited that led to a breakthrough, how do we understand that that chain and those connections of events and, and how do we give credit to the different people that contributed to people and places, I guess, that contributed to um, this advancement in the particular domain or field. And so um, I think it's really important to not narrow it down. Um, I think we do need to try to be careful about making the list too long. Um, mm -hmm. 
and really learning from the community and, and enabling those use cases. And we've really tried to start to develop different technologies on top of the GraphQL API that we have that can then give us an opportunity to engage in a dialogue with the community and understand, okay, well, what are the things that we need to focus on? And as an example, I brought up contributor roles. And that is something that has come up that's been quite important to some research groups and communities to, to build into, into the um, different services. Yeah, so it's kind of con connecting all the entities that have been involved in the ev this particular evolution of this particular bit of knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I saw a hand raised there from Mohammed, but it might have gone again now. So uh, I'm not sure if there was a question there. Um, I think that might have gone down again. Mohammed, do raise your hand again if you wanted to add something to the conversation. Okay, I have another question. My This question is for the panel but I'd also really like to hear from the audience as well to answer this question. Um, so the question is, is really about what do we think is working well at the moment? So we know metadata is used for connecting objects and entities. So are there examples of where these kind of connections are working well, maybe different parts of the community working together or tools or parts of the infrastructure? Um, so. I will ask the panel this, but if anybody in the audience has some good examples that they'd be happy to share with us, please put them in the Q&A or indeed raise your hand and, and tell us live. Um, but let's start with the um, panel. Um, Ludo, can you think of any, any good examples of where this is going well? Uh, yeah, definitely. There's one example, and it's perhaps a bit ironic, uh, given my earlier comment, but the citations, um, the, the openness of citations is really a huge milestone. It has been uh, has been reached. Um, essentially, full openness of all citation links between publications. That's something that was completely unthinkable, uh, let's say, six, seven years ago. And now we, have, we more or less have it, which is really great. Uh, as I explained before, we need to move beyond citations, but nevertheless, we should be inspired by what we have together. Uh, I think also many of the people in this in this meeting today have all contributed what we have managed to accomplish there. And we should kind of try to think about what we can learn from that and how we can basically do similar things around other types of uh, metadata elements. Yeah. So, so not not forget that that our starting point <laughs> of citations, but learn and move on from that. That's great, Patricia. What would you say is a good example of success? Um, well, I mean, I, I I do agree that that citations are the best e example, and it, it's exciting that it's it's so established. And then that now we're looking for ways to refine and um, expand that. But I think also. Um, the um the funding information and funding identifiers has been particularly uh, successful and it's good to see that now that the fund funder registries um combining with the ROAR registry um I I feel like that whole like having an open identifier for affiliations we we're not seeing a lot of numbers in our metadata yet because it's it's still ramping up but I feel like there's like a lot of movement and discussion and potential there um, that I could call a potential future success. <laughs> nice. Uh, Mercury, what would you say is a, is a success? Well, the successes I have seen, but we, we, are, we are yet to fully enjoy them as benefits, uh, you know, from speaking from an African perspective, would be you know the journey from preprints to to the final versions and also the connection of OSID or ORCID to authors being you know like you can be able to get information because it's automatically updated. So th this this has helped a lot with the you know visibility and also research work. But sadly, I, I would say that this has only benefited still a few of uh, researchers, let's say from Africa, and this is a space which we are trying to, to be able to, to work on and see if we can be able to have, you know, bigger numbers in the future, being in, enjoying, you know, the benefits of having 
uh, metadata. Otherwise, uh, it's it's there's, it's commendable what has happened because of you know the linkages. Thank you. Yeah, good to hear. Uh, Van. Um, I think maybe not to pin down a particular resource type. Um, I would probably say that there's there's been a big shift in recognition that it's important for things like relational metadata describing these actions in the nexus that are happening between these things. And so there's a big shift around the recognition of the importance and that we need to do this. I think the technology has also made it possible to do this. Um, maybe just to touch on, I don't think we've necessarily made it easy. And that's a growth area that I think we need to, and, and not to jump right to the end, and we can talk about this, I, I'm sure, towards the end when we wrap up, but I, I think we need to be able to leverage the technologies that are available to us across the ecosystem and the community to power that quality metadata that we need to make this a reality. Um, and I think we need to do that in a way that we can build provenance into those services so that there's trust and transparency in that metadata and where it's coming from. Um, and just recognizing that it's a heavy lift for many stakeholders in the community when we're talking about all of these metadata properties, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the, the the big one is that we have seen the importance and big things like the open citations efforts and, and you know, I think really moving that forwards. Um, but I'm also jumping ahead to kind of, well, what's next and how do we really make that easy to accelerate that and reach the critical mass that we need that this, this promise of what we're talking about here is, is really a reality for everyone across the globe. Mm. Yeah. Van. What's your take? Hi, oh, um, I agree uh, with you on, a lot on the references and citations, but maybe uh, I share some basic uh, uh, idea from the publisher's perspective, because since metadata uh, basically explains what data means and the key to making data fair, which is also the principle from publishers to support with the community we, we serve. So it's been um, maybe already uh, maybe not that successful, but already good for authors and main stakeholders like authors, mm -hmm. readers, library, librarians, retailers, policymakers to identify the valuable and accountable content from the uh, uh, publisher's platform by searching, searching on key elements of the information uh, when publishers adhere to the best public but best publishing practice uh, to keep the research integrity. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's the answer from my end. Lovely, thank you. Um, Jenny. What to add to all of that? Yeah, there's a lot of ground covered already. I mean, yeah, rather than picking one thing, I would agree that there's more attention mm. um, and a greater sort of, it feels like there's a more collective effort to focus on improving metadata completeness and quality um and we've learned a lot from the success of the open citations uh initiative um and you know everyone refers to because it's really good the the pyramid from brian nosek you know make it possible make it easy make it normative and we've talked about you know, policymakers. So when you have when you have a community that's working together of all of those aspects, you could say Crossref and 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 data site and and the like are kind of making things possible. But it needs those other stakeholders to engage and agree on what the uh, what the priorities are. And it really, the community really coalesced around citations and open citation mm. data. Um, so we need to learn from that. Uh, and again, not just make the big long list because there is funding data, there's versions, there's translation, <laughs> there's data, there's contributor, <laughs> there's provenance. Um, so a community kind of uh, prioritization list would be amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's that is, I think, emerging. That is sort of emerging, I think, um, certainly with data uh citation i think um funding metadata that patricia mentioned as well there seems to be some sort of newer priorities 
uh, where, you know, we sort of see questions from different people around the same subjects coming up at sort of the same time. Um, and then uh, not to just jump ahead too much, but there's a question in, in the in the Q&A about how to center equity in, in the research nexus. And even though we're saying, you know, well done, citations are all open, still only half of Crossref members are providing references to, to, to Crossref. So there's still a lot more work to be done to make sure that um, any any object or any uh, organization involved in research is able to participate, knows what's possible and is able to use the, the tools um, and access the, the metadata as well. As Matt was saying, like being able to kind of show demonstrations and visualizations is really powerful um, because it incentivizes sort of both ends, the creators to do more and the consumers to use to use this metadata more. So I'm, I'm, I may have jumped ahead to your to the question, but uh, consider me uh, answered for that one as well. <laughs> great stuff. Thanks, Ginny. Um, so, yeah, it'd be great to hear from the audience if anybody listening has got other examples of um, success stories where connecting metadata and relationships have, has worked really well. While while we're giving time for people to type type or put their hands up, um, Ginny, you did mention we had a we had a question um, in the Q and A from Vinod, which said um, which kind of referred back to Matt's example about the malaria research earlier. Um, I'll read it out just in case not everybody can see it. Um, thank you, panel, for kicking off this interesting discussion. It's interesting to note that the graph of relationships between different research objects. It's valuable for funders and organizations for research evaluation. As Matt Byers pointed out, the example of malaria research, I was wondering how to center equity in the research nexus. Um, so Ginny, you kind of covered that one already, but does anybody else have any thoughts about um, how we can contribute there as a community? I can maybe add that I think it's key to work with communities across the globe in all regions in making sure that there aren't significant barriers to getting information into the nexus. And so that's a comprehensive approach. It's not just about the ability to register and identify metadata. It extends to partnering with communities to understand the needs and workflows of researchers in the communities, as well as actually building infrastructure and, and um, plugging that infrastructure, te technical infrastructure is what I'm talking about here, and into the global, you know, nexus. So I think um, there are opportunities and different platforms and different services and publishers that work across the globe, um, but it's really just making sure that there are concerted efforts, proactive efforts in making sure that the global community um, can be connected. Um, but on the back of that, we also need to make sure that we have the policymakers and the funders creating real tangible incentive and recognizing this. Because um, if I look at, you know, the example of malaria research, that particular researcher would have likely not received any incentive or funding, uh, potentially. I, I'm not saying would have not, but um, very likely would have received little credit and little funding for the work done. And so by building the community together and having that all connect, we can have a fund to actually recognize some of the original research or the original data that was collected and incentivize that and create a real tangible incentive for, for um, the global. Thanks, Matt. Ludo. Yeah, just a short comment building essentially on what Matt was already saying. I think the equity thing, and that's also why I feel all these developments are so important. The equity thing is um, in particular uh, very clearly visible. When you compare the opportunities that we now have to, uh, using data that is made available through infrastructures like CrossRep and DataSite, when we compare the, these opportunities with the more traditional way of working, which for instance, my own center has a long history in working with proprietary databases that make available similar types of data, but they do so in a way that I would argue is um, <clears throat> from an equity point of view, much less satisfactory. 
And so they, these databases tend to be selective. They tend to make choices like what, what to include, what to cover, what to index, mm -hmm. and what not to include. And essentially, these are decisions that they make about what counts in science and what doesn't count. And these decisions have far-reaching consequences, and they may actually reinforce all kinds of inequities in the research system. And it's really important that we move away from, from, from these dynamics. And that's why I feel that the thing we are discussing today is, is, is hugely important. Yeah, so that the the kind of openness and the community themselves can make the decisions rather than it being pre-selected. Yeah, Indeed. absolutely. Yeah. And Mercury. Uh, some of the ways that I could think of uh, being able to encourage equity or center on equity is just being able to make uh, metadata and related tools accessible, you know, by considering you know, using tools that uh, would be able to support people with different technological capabilities, uh, being able to provide multilingual support where you have interfaces that are able to, you have metadata that is accessible also to people who are non-English speaking or who come from non-English speaking regions and uh, being able to provide, uh, you know, training uh, for, for people to learn how to use this effectively uh, and be able to uh, know how they can be able first and foremost to access some of the resources and be able to know how to contribute uh, mm -hmm. you know effectively to some some of the work that is ongoing thank you yeah so make just making sure that that everybody in the community is aware of what's happening and how how they can contribute yes. absolutely patricia Oh, yeah, I was just going to mention as the med, like someone who focuses on metadata a lot, I think that there are a lot of barriers just kind of baked into the metadata. A lot of established schemas collect because they don't really recognize multilingualism and there's a lot of issues with names, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just I just wanted to, to bring that up because that's something we're thinking about and we're um, trying to do a lot of work and we'll, we'll work with the community just to make sure we, we've got it right um, to, to make sure going forward we don't have those limitations because I think those are like extra hoops people have to jump through to get their metadata registered which we never want. Mm. Yeah absolutely. Very good. Hopefully Vinod that that gave you some ideas but do do put in the chat um, your thoughts as well um, and I see Vinod's also added um, going back to our examples of what's working well is um, the open air graph um, as a good example of kind of metadata relationship reuse right. I think that's all our questions and comments from the audience so let's move on from what's been going well and uh, been going successfully to move on to what's not been going quite so well. Uh, where where are there problems that we we as a community need to tackle? Where can we improve? Uh, who'd like to kick us off? Uh, Ludo, great. Um, let me give an example of a very practical, concrete example. Um, so. Um, my center, we built a university ranking. Each year, we release a new update of this ranking, the so-called Leiden ranking. It's at the moment, at the moment based on a proprietary database. Um, we feel strongly that these types of rankings um, need to be as transparent as possible. And that's why we also feel that we as a center, we need to move to towards a, a more open, more transparent version of this ranking tool that we release each year. We are currently working on it. We are using, for instance, data from Crossref. Um, I'm proud of this kind of transition that we are trying to make, proud of the the, the, the efforts uh, of, or the, the opportunities that we now have to kind of be more transparent, to do better than we did in the past. But I also am a bit nervous because we are going to release something which will be imperfect, which will have problems, which will have gaps. And that has to do with gaps in the underlying metadata. It has to do with kind of the infrastructure being being not fully used in the way it ideally should be used. 
for instance, in very practical terms, publications, articles, journal articles, not being linked to uh, the institutions that have um, authored the, uh, the publications. This will mean that these publications might be invisible in the ranking that my center is going to release in the next few months. Uh, I'm nervous about it because I think I might be criticized for that, but I'm also nervous for kind of the system as a whole because um, we need to get this right. It's really important. And um, yeah, we can only do this if, if we work together on kind of making sure we fill these gaps in the in the metadata. Great, thanks, Ludo. Mercury. Well, this is a point which has already been mentioned. I just want um, I want to bring it up because uh, it's it's an area which has seen a lot of success, but we still we can do more. How do we connect you know, data sources effectively with the research output? Because sometimes this gets lost. In, okay, the, the site, I remember an example somebody had put here where uh, there's a citation which is quoting another citation, which is going to the to, to a different particular uh, research output. So how, how do we uh, make it possible for us to you know, have that you know, the, a seamless link between the two. Thanks. That's a question for us to see how it's a challenge actually. Great, thanks Mercury. Any other thoughts from the panel on how we can, kind of how the community can focus our efforts to connect a more comprehensive picture of research? Um. Sorry, can I jump in or? Go, Matt, go. Um, sorry, not following the right protocol. I saw everyone else's hands up. <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, what I can say is we, we need bold steps. And I think what CWTS are doing is, is really some some important. And I think we, we need to recognize this as a community. And I think Ludo is calling out that it's not perfect. And, you know, there's work that we need to do, but we need to rally behind this because, and, and we can link this back to the equity question to kind of accelerating our efforts in this area, we need to take these bold steps um, together, um, but also recognize our respective stakeholder contributions that we can make this a reality. And so, you know, obviously from Ludo's perspective, they're looking at this from an evaluation point of view. And so that's fantastic. But what are we doing from the repositories point of view, publishers point of view, the funders, and the policymakers and and not all just sit around and say, well, we'll do it when these people do this and that. Um, let's all take our, our collective steps together. Um, and I think if we all are focused on that, we we can reach the critical mass that um, we do see value in this and, and we do make a shift. Um, and I am scared like Budo that, you know, there's going to be critique. And I think um, we need to be mindful of that what our end goal is or what, what the what the vision is here and, and moving forward to that. So yeah, I think in in, in a breath, I, I guess bold steps by stakeholders with their respective um contributions that they can make to move this forwards. Thanks, Matt. Ginny. Yeah, the bold steps. I like that. Um and uh yeah, I love I love a you know, a campaign and I love getting the community together like we have with I4OC and, and others. Um, metadata 2020, for example, I think put metadata on the agenda. It's you can't move for a, for a conference talking about metadata. Um, but I would also uh, maybe just to bring it down to a particular example where we could improve uh, would be around affiliations. Um you know, we've been accepting in Crossref metadata affiliation strings for years, but of course they're not unique. They're totally not normalized and they're really messy. Um, but with RAW, uh, which is both a Crossref and data site and a CDL initiative, um, you know, the community did come together to create a better solution for affiliations. And if we see more adoption of that, um, actually, I think the repositories are doing pretty well. Um, it's really well supported in data site. We need more uh, raw identifiers in publications. Um, and we need the, you know, I know some of the larger publishers are nearly there and about to announce. Um, but I'd love to see 
yeah, raw IDs uh, for affiliations uh, grow. I want to be at the next annual meetings reporting on the stats as I did this morning, that that's one of the greatest um, leaps that we've had. Because I think uh, also if we're talking about assessment and ranking, I think if affiliation is is very relevant there. Also, uh, research integrity as well is, you know, just getting a fuller picture of what the institution's role is in the whole of the the ecosystem. It hasn't been linked up necessarily that well to the actual scholarly record so far. So I think there's a big opportunity. It might seem like a small step just to kind of add more ideas, but it could it could have a really big impact in inverted commas. <laughs> Thanks, Finney. Patricia. Um, yeah, I, I I just wanted to to mention that um, when we look at the relationships we correct, collect at, at Crossref, the, the by far the ones that are provided most, not, not a huge surprise, but are the ones where they're either required or like very strongly encouraged as a best practice. And it's like more of a, like if you think of the carrot versus the stick approach, like the ones with the stick, we get more relationships and the stick doesn't necessarily need to come from Crossref because we don't want to require, like we don't want to require affiliations because maybe some, something is doesn't have an affiliation. Maybe a member is just not able to provide them from us and we're, and we're causing them a lot of stress and expense um, to register something if we require affiliations. So um, I like the idea of not, I hate to say like this, sticker requirements, but um, just we've seen a lot of uh, success with uh, pressure from outside organizations. And I hate these words I'm using um, as, as a parent, <laughs> but uh, I'd rather um, encourage people and tell them the good things that metadata will do for them. But sometimes it, it's, it is good to just make a bold statement and say, you have to do this or bad things will happen. <laughs> we'll stick. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Uh, Ran. Uh, hi. I, I just uh, comes to me to think about the uh, multilingual metadata uh, from perhaps from different uh, different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, what what I know uh, from from China, uh, we have I think more than five thousand domestic uh, academic journals. Uh, but I don't think all of them are using the standard uh, metadata from from cross cross uh, But I do know that many mm. of them do have the metadata using a standard way to uh, to share it, and and we are also trying to connect with uh, a global world for uh, for dissemination of this knowledge. Uh, and I think um, uh, uh, much of the uh, the content are countable. Uh, so I'm just, uh, sometimes as a publisher, I'm, I was uh, quite worried because I, I, I feel like there should be some untaped world uh, with a countable content. And uh, mm -hmm. some of them may be long standing, uh, uh, long with, with long history. We might need to uh, digitalize uh, many of them as, many, as much as possible. And uh, we may also try to improve the standard of uh, metadata because uh, different disciplines might uh, um, ask for the data repository from different databases, such as um, GeneBank for uh, biological science. And we also have big share, uh, big share for uh, large uh, files. And uh, with the advanced technology, we might think about some generative um, AI, such as GPT, uh, with, with your help to get better connection and using these multilingual metadata uh, to contribute to the uh, Nexus, research Nexus. Yeah, that's um, the thought from my end. Yes, yeah, so that's a kind of... I guess systems infrastructure improvement there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ludo. Yeah, there's one other area that I would like to highlight, an area where I think we need to do better, but also where we have a really important opportunity right now. Actually, this morning, um, some of you may have seen that, this morning the funders in Coalition S, the funders behind Plan S, they published their kind of vision for the future. Um, a vision and a proposal that is under discussion that will probably still change a lot 
that the essence or at least one of the essential elements of that vision is to move towards a scholarly communication system where um, we move away from having kind of outputs that have just one version, outputs have multiple versions, these different versions are released or published as early as possible, they're linked to uh, reviews or other types of, of, of feedback or, or evaluations of these works. Um, to make this work, this, this whole vision, we need, of course, to have proper infrastructure to support this. So mm -hmm. what I think, what we see right now is we see funders who are essentially a bit more at the top of this culture change pyramid that was already mentioned. They are starting to move, to change policies, to change uh, incentive systems. That means that those who are more at the bottom of the, of the pyramid, at the level of infrastructures, at the level of of, of, of tools and those now have a really an opportunity to um, start uh, building the type of system that the funders uh, consider to be the future for, for scholarly communication. So it's an opportunity that, that I would like to highlight. And it's also an opportunity that I, to be honest, think uh, still requires quite a lot of work in terms of infrastructure improvement and indeed metadata links. Good stuff. Thanks, Ludo. Um... Just looking at the chat, I see we've got a lot of support for the importance of RAW, which is great. And I think we have a, a hand raised by Blessing. Um, Shane, would you mind uh, unmuting Blessing? Okay, Blessing, would you do go ahead? You might need to unmute yourself. We've now made it possible for you to talk, Blessing, but you might need to unmute yourself. Uh, blessing. I'm not sure if you're talking there. You might need to unmute yourself. Looks like I can't do that. Oh, sorry, Blessing. It looks like we're not able to get your your sound to type um, into the chat or the uh, Q&A. Sorry, we couldn't get your, your sound going. Um, okay, so we've talked about um, what's going well, um, what's not going so well. Um, there was a lot of talk about kind of the carrot and stick, um, and there was a, a bit of a reference there at the end to the infrastructure. Um, any other changes that we as a community need to make to things like maybe policy um, or particularly the, the infrastructures that we all make use of? I think maybe just to add that, uh, and there's not necessarily some specific things here, but I do feel until the tenure and promotion um, changes, I think um, we're still going to have challenges. Um, and that's a social change across the broad community. I don't have a specific answer. Um, it's not a challenge that we're just going to carry on running into war, but I think we just need to appreciate that it's going to take time. But I think the more we talk about these efforts and the more we can demonstrate how this can be used in tenure and promotion um, committees, as an example, the more we can affect change globally. Are there any other ways we can help encourage the community to maybe contribute metadata as well outside of um infrastructure and policy changes. Any other thoughts on how we can get the communities more involved? Uh, Ludo. Yeah, I think we need to recognize, of course, that it takes effort to do all these things in the right way. Um, so for instance, I was just complaining a little bit, of course, about affiliation data sometimes being missing or, or other types of relationships not being uh, in the, in the, for instance, the cross-site metadata, but it's easy to complain, but it's also understandable that all these things take effort and therefore some organizations, for instance, some publishers have not yet managed to uh, get all this data into, uh, into the right infrastructures in the right way. Um, I think, and now I'm perhaps a bit more looking at this from the perspective of research institutions, um, universities, for instance, I think that we also need to give recognition and credit to those who do well, uh, to those who indeed kind of fulfill all these uh, expectations that we have, um, recognizing that indeed this takes effort and ultimately this this requires money, this is, this is not something that comes for free. 
Um, so, for instance, what you see is, um, of course, lots of discussions going on between research organizations and publishers. And, and there's, of course, many things at stake, open access, all of these things. But what we should do, I think, um, as part of these negotiations, we should recognize the importance of publishers making a contribution to getting all the metadata right. Um, and some publishers are doing a great job for already, and they deserve to be recognized for that. Um, and those who still kind of uh, um, need to improve a bit the way they, they do all these things, they need to be, I would say, incentivized to indeed to do so. So I think here we need to kind of have a more explicit conversation about the stakes and the and the, the mutual interests. And, uh, and that should probably also be kind of formally part of negotiations that are taking place between universities, libraries, and, and publishers. Yeah, great point. Thanks, Ludo. Well, I see we're, we're coming up to our last few minutes, so I think I might start to bring us to a close. So just to finish up, I wonder if we could just go back round the panel again and ask each panellist in turn just to say, what one thing do you think is key? What one thing do you think the community needs to focus on doing in order to help us build a more robust research nexus? We've covered a lot of ground, but, uh, but where would you focus? Um, let's start with Mercury. Thank you. Uh, I, I think the, the most important uh, area that I would uh, add just to focus on would be, you know, enhancing community collaboration and engagement and uh, ensuring that there is active involvement in knowledge sharing within the scholarly community and being being able to help each other, each other uh, you know, like learn more on how we can be able to make a difference. Great stuff. Thanks, Mercury. Matt? I think um, also bringing it back to kind of the initial question around metadata and, you know, a lot of discussion around this is key. And so um, I guess maybe saying that just each stakeholder focusing on how you get um, more good quality metadata into open infrastructure that can be reused uh, by anyone in the community is, is kind of a key piece of this. Great stuff. Thanks, Matt. Patricia. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say over, um, it's so hard to... Like, we've all done a lot of outreach and working with the community and getting people to engage with metadata. Um, and one of the, one of the things I've personally experienced is, um, I'm, I'm sure, uh, I can see, uh, Shane's picture on the screen. I'm sure he relates to me a lot. Just, uh, when, when I used to, um, work more with the, um, on the support side of things is encouraging someone to send us metadata and then realizing how hard it is, or they want to send us something that we don't support that's really essential. So I think the, the really important thing I, I'd like to focus on is making it easier for everyone and making sure all their needs are met so that when the opportunity arises for them to send us this, this metadata that they have, we can all act. Right, thanks, Patricia. Uh, Ran? Uh, well, uh, I, I would say to for, call for um, openness from scientists to uh, to share, feel free to share their, their data and uh, because small changes uh, does matter um, and they, when sharing their data uh, that would bring more collaborations and then we, we could um, contribute together for the community, we, we work together. Yeah, that's it. Good stuff. Ginny? Yeah, I would say um more opportunities to extend a conversation like this into a coordinated plan of action. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, this is, I think that we're hearing, and certainly my experience is that everybody's intentions actually are to uh, do their part uh, where possible. Um, but if we can increase like understanding about the challenges that different players have um, mm. and coordinate, you know, coordinate around that I would love to see a kind of uh you know a follow-on movement about about richer open metadata great stuff and Ludo 
Yeah, perhaps building on what Jimmy just said, I think that um, in, in terms of community, I think for me, the community also very much are the, um, the research organizations um, and ultimately, of course, the researchers and even society that, that we are ultimately supposed to serve. And looking at it from that perspective, I think what you see is research organizations make so many decisions based on data. Data is so essential in decision making. We need to think very carefully about how all the data is being managed, being being curated. Um, and that's a conversation that needs to take place in a much more explicit way. Sometimes you see it happening a little bit under these labels like digital sovereignty and all of that. That's mm -hmm. really crucial. And I guess an initiative like what, what Ginny was proposing should should put this uh, more prominently on the uh, on the agenda. Great stuff. Thanks, Ludo. Gosh, well, an hour was definitely never enough to cover all of this ground. It sounds like we've got lots of lots of follow on conversations to to have. Um, thank you ever so much for our, to our panelists and for everybody who is also active in the Q and A and the chat. Um, we'll continue this conversation over on our community forum, but also no doubt in in future events. Um, we do hope everyone on this call will be able to join us for the next session, um, the annual meeting proper with the results of our um, board elections. And I've just pasted a link to the next session in case anybody doesn't have it into the chat. Thank you ever so much all. And we shall all speak soon, no doubt. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now.